Nepal is one of the most vulnerable countries uh, in terms of disaster risk. Nepal ranks 33 out of 194 countries in the Index for Risk Management uh, rankings. And the image that you see on the screen is an image of uh, all the recorded earthquakes uh, <coughs> of different magnitudes. So as you can see in the image, the risk for earthquakes are spread almost evenly throughout the whole countries, in and around the country. But even though the risk is spread very evenly, the availability of map data that helps us to deal with the crisis is not spread so evenly. The data divide, which is a culmination of the digital device, which uh, itself uh, is probably uh, because of the <coughs> economic divide, is not very favorable to places like Kalikot, which is a remote district in Nepal. Uh, but as you can see, for the big cities like Kathmandu, uh, the availability of map data, even in uh, in OpenStreetMap, is uh, very good. So, how do you address the availability of map data in places like Kalikot, uh, where the current approaches to map mapping in OpenStreetMap have uh, not been very very good. So this is the question we ask ourselves. How do you remain prepared with maps against disasters that could strike any day and anywhere? Good afternoon. My name is Chitish Kanal. I am a researcher at Kathmandu Living Labs. And I'll uh, talk about uh, a new approach. Uh, we tried to garner prolific contributions in OpenStreetMap. We designed a, a digital internship and leadership program uh, at Kathmandu Living Labs, and this presentation is our own assessment of uh, the whole experience, how it went. Let's start with the existing approaches in OpenStreetMap community. Uh, as we are all the vibrant members of the community, we know uh, about mapping parties, individual contributions, crisis mapathons, these are more popular ones. And recently, we have seen uh, various companies like Facebook, Mapbox, Apple using uh, employing people to contribute data and also maintain the data quality as a part of their work. So we have uh, some experiences from the OSM community of Nepal uh, that shows that the remote and underdeveloped places like uh, Kalikot are barely mapped. Uh, and uh, this low uh, retention of people in, uh, after mapping parties or crisis mapathons. It's, uh, uh, mapping parties are very good for, uh, <clears throat> for the social interaction in the community, meet, meeting people face to face. But uh, uh, it's also, uh, but very few people who come to mapping parties, uh, and mostly the new people uh, do not continue mapping after the mapping parties. And, uh, also, the common demographic of mappers we see in Nepal are the university-educated males who are living in major cities of Nepal. Uh, I think this is a case uh, for many places, as the most uh, scholarly uh, research also corroborate this finding. Uh, this uh, indicates two things. So uh, first is that uh, we know who to approach if we uh, want to make maps. But this also indicates a problems, uh, problem that uh, there is a need for a greater uh, gender inclusion in the community. And uh, OpenStreetMap is considered one of the uh, special cases of neo-geography, where uh, a common criticism is that it doesn't uh, actually empower the people who are on the ground contributing or volunteering uh, geographic information. So we also try to uh, try our best to empower uh, the mappers. So, uh, in, a, in order to address um, different issues that we have experienced in the community, uh, we decided that we, uh, we need to try something else uh, in order to supplement the existing approaches. So, uh, we came up with an intervention. So, sorry for the bad pun. Uh, so, it's a program uh, that is targeted to students and recent graduates from uh, any academic domain. Uh, from Nepal. Uh, basically, we are trying to utilize their leisure time uh, to map remote places of Nepal. It's an unpaid internship program run by Kathmandu Living Labs, and most of the tasks that they perform in their internship is uh, uh, remote mapping tasks, uh, because they can do it from the comfort of their own home uh, to map uh, different places. But uh, 
we decided that uh, not only can they map, but uh, we can also help uh, them learn about maps, learn about geography, society, read different things, uh, practice critical thinking, writing, and presentation skills all uh, as a package of the program. And uh, the interns, uh, uh, during the intensive period, do not have to come to our office. They can uh, use their own space, uh, own uh, home to uh, do their tasks. And uh, the interaction with KLL staff and among uh, themselves is mostly virtual. So if I had to summarize what we wanted to do in a single line, that's uh, this is what we wanted to do. Utilize young people's leisure time for a predefined period uh, through an intensive period uh, to map under map places. So there were several stages in conducting uh, the, the intensive program in, uh, which we call as dial in short. So first, the recruitment. Uh, we open online applications for uh, every uh, student's uh, young people. And uh, then they, we conduct telephone interviews. And based on the telephone interviews and uh, their online application, we select, uh, uh, we select uh, the interns. And they, they are trained for four days, in which we teach them remote mapping skills, field mapping skills, uh, visualizing data on the web. And uh, there are also lectures about uh, many related things, such as, uh, such as geography, uh, crisis management, civic awareness, uh, things that could really help them. Uh, and, then, uh, and then the internship program actually begins. So the internship period, uh, so far we have conducted two different cohorts of internship. The first cohort was two months long. It was for uh, 10 students. And the second cohort was three months long, and it was for uh, 22 students, uh, but only 19 continued the program. So uh, these are the students of uh, the first cohort. Uh, uh, most of many of the students had a background in geomatics engineering. Uh, few of them in crisis management. One had in architecture, uh, and then we had students coming from forestry and uh, business administration at, as well. So it was kind of a mixed cohort. In a period of two months, the eight interns who continued the program uh, were mostly involved in four uh, big tasks, uh, uh, including mapping plot of areas in the southern plains of Nepal and mapping places in mountainous regions. Uh, so in a period of the two months, they mapped 183,000 buildings and 1,400 roads. But uh, these numbers don't tell the full story, as you all know. Similarly, in 2018, we ran the second cohort of dial for a uh, bigger group. Uh, we had uh, we trained 22, uh, 22 students, and uh, 19 of them continued the program after the training. And uh, we also had uh, students with a background in uh, computer science, geomatics engineering, and then uh, we also had a few from veterinary science and uh, <coughs> public health. Uh, this is also a mixed cohort as well. And in the period of three months, uh, the 19 interns mapped four tasks uh, uh, that involved mapping districts in mountainous, hilly, and plain regions of Nepal. Uh, and they mapped 206,000 buildings and 4,000 kilometers of road. So the places that uh, looked like this before. Uh, so I took the data uh, in January for 1st of January for 2018. Uh, this place is uh, near one of the very uh, uh, one of the big cities of Nepal uh, in Nepal. Uh, it's in the south, uh, southern part of Nepal. So even though the place is close to a big city, uh, it was not mapped very well. Uh, so after the intensive program, the data is more dense and there are more details. Uh, but you can see there are so many buildings and uh, roads and the water networks are mapped, but uh, not much uh, names. So that, uh, that is one of the problems of the remote internship program. That is why uh, uh, we were working very closely with uh, Nepalgan sub-metropolitan city office. Uh, in, uh, in our, one of our city technology projects, and uh, uh, and the city office was concerned with the lack of geospatial information in infrastructure uh, around uh, the newly formed submetropolitan city. So uh, we designed a custom version of uh, dial for Nepalgan's submetropolitan city, in which we uh, recruited ten local youths from uh, from the uh, from the students uh, in the same area. 
and then we uh, train them uh, in remote mapping skills, field mapping skills and the skills similar to other cohorts of dial. Uh, but there are few differences uh, uh, in dial Nepal ones from the other two dial cohorts. Uh, one was that uh, it's done in co coordination with the uh, municipality office. Uh, it was a paid internship program and uh, uh, the tasks were more heavy on field mapping because uh, the municipality had certain interest uh, like uh, they wanted to map all the industrial areas nearby. Uh, so uh, this was more heavy on field mapping compared to uh, the heavier on um, remote mapping for the previous cohorts. And in a period of two months, the uh, 15 interns uh, <coughs> performed both uh, remote mapping and field mapping tasks and they mapped 8,000 uh, buildings and 80 kilometers of roads. So after running uh, three different cohorts, uh, we uh, decided to dig a little deeper than just the uh, number of buildings they had created or the number of uh, edits in OSM that they had made. So uh, we realized that the students who had a background in geomatics engineering, they were mapping more than other students. So we asked the questions, do interns with a background in geography map more since they have uh, more understanding of the value of uh, map data. Uh, we uh, <coughs> created a graph uh, for uh, before the internship, during internship, and after internship of the number of uh, daily nodes created uh, by the group of uh, two students. And uh, we found that although um, the engineers, uh, although the geomatics engineers all, uh, hadn't mapped much before the internship, during the internship they mapped a bit more than uh, other interns. But uh, after the interns, after the internship program, they all, uh, uh, <coughs> They continued mapping uh, while the line stayed flat for the rest of the interns. So, uh, uh, but I have to concede that this study was uh, done only for the first cohort. So that's only eight students, and the evidences that we find here are more suggestive uh, than conclusive. We plan to do similar analysis for the second cohort and uh, and the cohorts that we run in the future. But uh, these are uh, some findings from uh, our early analysis. And similarly, uh, since we are uh, proposing a supplementary alternative approach, uh, approach uh, to mapping remote corners, we decided to compare it with, with the existing uh, crowdsourced approach uh, of projects like the humanitarian open street map team. So we collected data of uh, all the crowdsourced mapping projects uh, with uh, beginner and intermediate uh, difficulty level that were completely mapped and then we con uh, compared it with uh, the tasks that were co done by uh, students of dial cohort 2. We, we did not include the students of dial cohort 1 because uh, the tasks were mixed. The tasks that they were performing were also done by other people from the community. So we do not include uh, data from the first cohort. But uh, uh, during in the second cohort, we found that uh, the red dots are for uh, dial mapping projects and the blue dots for uh, crowdsourced mapping projects. And most of the crowdsourced mapping projects are small in area and they are completed within a period of few days. But uh, many uh, tasks are also um, bigger in area and they are also uh, completed uh, in more than 50 days. But uh, uh, in the very small sample size that we have, uh, we found that uh, two of our tasks were uh, small and they were also completed within few days. But uh, uh, there were two tasks which were considerably uh, larger than most tasks, and uh, but they were also completed in the number of days that is uh, less than the median values of uh, the crowdsource approach. And uh, again, uh, this uh, study is also very simplistic and it's replete with assumptions. So uh, we don't want to say anything that uh, the results are conclusive. But uh, they also suggest that uh, if you have uh, if you have some interns who have uh, uh, specific uh, tasks to map in their uh, in their leisure time, then the task gets completed faster uh, than the existing approaches. So we also uh, wanted to know what is it that uh, motivated students to participate in a program like DIAL. So we made a list of uh, possible motivations and then we asked, uh, we asked them to uh, rank the motivations uh, in, a Likert scale, uh, in a Likert scale and we found that uh, the thing that attracted uh, the students most uh, to the <coughs> 
to the internship program are in the order as listed below. So uh, they were most interested in learning digital leadership skills. Uh, yeah, I know it's a very big term and people could define it uh, as they please, but uh, and followed by uh, contributing to society, learning to map, getting a first professional job experience, making productive use of their free time, understanding geography and society through mapping. So assessing how much people map and uh, the number of nodes they create is easy, but how do you assess something like civic awareness? Although uh, raising the civil, civic awareness is also a goal of the program. So we have a uh, few pointers from uh, the blog post that our interns have written and the report they have submitted. Uh, and a student, uh, Dakshita, she had a background in architecture and she noticed that she uh, <clears throat> She, uh, she told us that uh, she were noticing places she would have probably ignored uh, because of uh, because of mapping. Uh, it made her more aware of her surroundings. And uh, another intern, Nisa was pleased that uh, she could uh, serve the society uh, by managing her leisure time properly. Uh, similarly, a uh, student. Uh, most of our students uh, live and study in the big cities of Nepal, uh, so uh, they do not have much idea about what uh, goes on in the remote corners of Nepal. So, uh, so Shrabbe was pleased that he got to know the socio-economic condition of people uh, from different parts of Nepal uh, through the process of uh, remote mapping. And then uh, we have another big term, uh, the leadership. So how do you uh, see if uh, the, if the internship pro uh, pro program has helped uh, them to advance their leadership skills. There was a feature article in one of the most popular online news portals of Nepal about uh, digital mapping. Uh, and uh, two of our interns uh, from each cohort were interviewed uh, for the article and uh, they were also featured uh, in the article. Similarly, uh, some of our interns have gone on to represent uh, and present their experiences in the international forums like uh, State of the Map Asia and uh, Asian Ministerial Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction. So, uh, to be very honest, uh, <coughs> uh, we had an idea, we tried it and uh, and we had some expectations and uh, most of the expectations were uh, filled but we have few ref reflections from the whole experience uh, so uh, there are uh, there were certain challenges and some limitations uh, for example uh, the program like dial cohorts first and two could only address remote mapping so uh, so if we really want more detailed mapping uh, more mapping that is of interest interest to local uh, people uh, <clears throat> it needs custom programs like the dial Nepal guns and similarly uh, virtual communication is no substitute for interactions in person so uh, we cannot just uh, leave them to perform their tasks at home because it might uh, affect their motivations to continue the program so we need a right balance of in-person meetings and virtual communication similarly uh, we also need to provide uh, regular support to interns uh, through dedicated staff uh, uh, through dedicated staff. So uh, to conclude, I would like to uh, say just three things that uh, the dial approach can supplement existing approaches in mapping in the OSM community uh, as we have experienced. Similarly, it can help engage youth in filling critical data gaps in places uh, that are on the wrong side of the digital divide and uh, the process of mapping and learning or practicing digital skills make them more aware of their surroundings and help them prepare for leadership. Thank you. Hello, Fitis. Yeah, Hello. it's very nice presentation. Just one quick question about the internship. So one of the challenges that we have as well is to have internship is looking at companies or like uh, organization that use OpenStreetMap. But in your case, uh, is it only at the Kathmandu Living Labs or, or the internship is at other organization that may also use OpenStreetMap? I mean, how do you find the place for the internship? Uh, 
Yes, yeah, so far it's only run by Kathmandu Living Labs, but uh, if other organizations are interested to run a similar program, then uh, uh, we might be able, uh, then we will certainly help uh, as much as we can. Yeah, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you.